We continue now at the top of Daf Tzadi Aleph Amid Aleph and Masechus Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf 91a. And the previous summer, the Gemara had brought a brisa, which seemed to be a machlokis of whether there's Ksubas bin Indichran in a situation. Let's say you have a case where the husband marries a wife and then the wife dies, the first wife dies before the husband. But then when it comes to the second wife, so the husband dies first. So in that situation, there was a question whether there's Ksubas bin Indichran or not. And it seemed to be a machlokis in a brisa that the Rabbanan say there's no Ksubas bin Indichran. And Rabbi Shimon, he said, well, if there's an extra, if there's a surplus of a dinar after everything is distributed, then there would be Ksubas bin Indichran. So the Gemara says, no, it could be that's not the issue. It could be vahacha bedinor mikarkoi kamiflgi. It could be that the actual machlokus between the Rabban and Rabbi Shimon is when we talk about the surplus. Really, everybody agrees there's ksubas bin indichron in this in this case, but everybody also agrees you need a surplus. The question is, do you need to have the surplus from land or not? Mar savar mikarkoi in metaltalilo. One says that it has to be from land. If you have a surplus of at least a dinor from land, so then you can say there's a surplus, and then you can say there's a halach of ksubas bin and and those children of the first wife who died before her husband, so she didn't get a chance to collect the ksuba, they will get the ksuba has been in Dichron in a case of karka. Umar Savar Afilamatli, and the other one says, no, it doesn't have to only be land, even if it's movable objects, that also would be enough of a surplus to allow the halach of ksuba has been in Dichron. As Rashi over here says, Bedinar Mikarkoi Kamifleg Ibo Inan who Moser Shiesham Shtek Subas Vidinar Mikarkos. Do you need to have enough value from his property left over after he dies that it should fulfill both of the Ksubos? And a dinar of karka. But over here, the case happens to be there's only an extra surplus from movable objects. And that's why the Tanakama says that the children of the first wife are not able to collect because that's not considered a surplus. Rabbi Shimon comes along and says, no, as long as there's a surplus of a dinar, even if it's not karka, even if it's metaltalin, that is going to be enough. But the Gemara continues, but can you really say that's the machlokis here in this b'risa between the Rabbon and Rabbi Shimon? But we learned in the Mishnah, Rabbi Shimon, Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Afilu yesham nechosem she'ein lam achrayis, even if you have a situation where there is property with no achrayis, meaning it is not karka, but it is movable property, einon klum, that's nothing. At she'esham nechosem she'esh lan achrayis, unless you have property with achrayis, meaning land, yes, or al-beis, ksubas dinar, and the land itself has to have a surplus of a so you see, Rabbi Shimon is actually strict in that regard. We were just suggesting that Rabbi Shimon was lenient in that regard and said movable property would be enough. But clearly over here, the Mishnah that we're quoting says that Rabbi Shimon holds that you need to have a surplus and it has to be land. And so the Gemara instead offers another possibility of the machlokas between Rabban and Rabbi Shimon. What they're arguing about over here is, what if it is a dinar, but it is property, it is leaned property. Mar savar mi chorin in mi meshabdi lo, one says that it has to be that you have actual surplus of free property. You can't count property that just is is part of the estate of the fathers because there's a lien on that property for the father. Umar Savar Mishabdi. And the other one says, no, even if it's a Nechas Meshubadim, it is property that is owed to the father, to his estate, that is considered a surplus. Rashi over here says, Umar Savar Mishabdi. Rabbi Shimon Savar Chov Havi Moser. Rabbi Shimon says, even if there's a debt, there's like a lien on other property that's supposed to come to the father's estate, that would also be enough. That's what Rabbi Shimon is being lenient on. So that could be the machlokis between the Rabban and Rabbi Shimon. But the Gemara says, Iyachi. If so, if that were the case, Rabbi Shimon Omer im Yesh Sham Moser Dinar. Rabbi Shimon, the way he phrases it is. If there is a Moser Dinar, what he should have said was, Kavon Shiyesham Moser Dinar mi Boile. He should have said, Since there is a Moser Dinar in that case. That's the way he should have phrased it. Rashi over here says, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Im Yesh Moser Dinar, Vra Brysa Kai. We're going on the Brysa now. Now that we're saying there is surplus, but it happens to me it's not free property, it's property that's just a lean property. Rabbi Shimon Lakula Kamar, and now we're saying Rabbi Shimon is being lenient in this regard when it comes to Nachas and Meshubadim. He should have phrased it in the following way. Since there's a Moser Dinar, that's good enough. The way that it was actually phrased, where Rabbi Shimon says, Im Yesh Sham Moser Dinar, sounds like Rabbi Shimon's being strict. Oh, only if you have the Moser Dinar. He should have said, Kevin, if he's being lean. And so the Gemara offers another explanation. Ella rather bepachos mi dinar kamifligi. They're arguing about a situation where it is less than a dinar. Mar savar dinar in pachos mi dinar lo. One says it has to actually be a dinar. If it is less than a dinar, that is not going to work. Umar savar afilu pachos mi dinar. And the other one says, even if it is less than a dinar, he's lenient and says, even a less than a dinar is going to be enough. 
But the Gemara says to that, but if you're trying to suggest that Rabbi Shimon is the more lenient one, but that's not what Rabbi Shimon himself says. Again, the phrase of Rabbi Shimon was a dinar. Sounds like Rabbi Shimon also requires it to be a dinar. Now if you're going to say, well, let's just reverse it. Let's say that Rabbi Shimon is the one. Uh, let's switch the opinions of the Rabbon and Rabbi Shimon. As Rashi over here says, meaning the explanation that we've given, let's reverse it. Maybe what the Tanakama was the one that was saying that they take the Ksubas bin and Dichrin, meaning when, when the Boneho Shelzu, when we talk about the children taking what they're supposed to be taking, that's actually going on the children of the first wife, and that the Tanakama is being lenient and says that they take the Ksubas bin and Dichrin. The also Rabbi Shimon Lemem and Rabbi Shimon is coming along and saying, No, they have to have a dinar. Pachos mi dinar is not good. If it's less than a dinar, it's not good enough. You can reverse the phrasing of how we explain Tanakam and Rabbi Shimon, and we'll say that Rabbi Shimon really is the one that is being strict. But the Gemara says you can't say that because Tanakama de Masnis and Nami Dinor Kamer. The Tanakama, the Mishnah also made it clear that he holds it needs to be a Dinor, meaning we have a Tanakama somewhere else, which we're assuming is the same as this Tanakama and the Brisa. Tanakama and the Mishnah and the Brisa are the same, and they seem to be saying that a Dinor is required. But Tanakama de Masnis and the Kamer Rabbi Shimon Alayu Afilu Yeshem the Chos of Shein Lamachrayis Eino Klum. That Tanakama, which Rabbi Shimon was going on and saying even in the Chos of Shein Lamachrayis is nothing Dinor Kamer the Kamer Haya Sham. Yes, sir, dinar. But Tanakama de Masnis and who Tanakama de Brisa? We're assuming again it's the same Tanakama. And so therefore you can't explain that the Tanakama is okay with less than a dinar and Rabbi Shimon requires a dinar. And when the Gemara here is referring to the Tanakama of the Mishnah, the Gemara is referring to the Tanakama of this Mishnah a little bit lower on the um, but there we're going to see the Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon in that Mishnah. But in any case, the Gemara says, therefore you cannot explain that this is the Machlokas over here between the Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon, that the, Tanak- the Tanakama says that less than a dinar is good enough. And Rabbi Shimon says you need a dinner, and rather, Ella, rather, Kihanach Trey Lishnoi Kamoi, rather, Gemara says, go back to one of the first two answers that we gave. Either they're arguing about movable property or leaned property, and the way that you can make it fit with the phrasing of the Brisa, the Epoch. So, on those answers, just reverse the opinion of the Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon. As Rashi over here says, Ella Kihani Trey Lishnoi Kamoi, Bedinor Mekarkoi, or Bedinor Meshabdi, they're arguing whether, let's say, there's a dinner, does it have to be land, or they're arguing when it comes to a dinner. Or is a is a leaned property going to be good enough? The epoch three tzus of a hachikamer. Just reverse the answer as follows: Tanakama boy in bonei shall rishona gam heim v'nolden ksubas iman mishum tnai. And the Tanakama is lenient and say that this the children of the first of the first wife can take the Ksubas Benindichrin. The Afa Gavdalaka la Moser Dinar Metatli. And they're saying even though it's only movable objects, that's good enough. O Mishavdi, or even though it's lean property, that's good enough. The Yasser Rabbi Shimon the Maimar. And this answer will say that Rabbi Shimon is coming along and he's being strict. And Yesha Moser Dinar Mekarkoi, Uvene Chori, Elo Nolan, only if it's land, only if it's free property. Bahashta Rabbi Shimon la Chumra. Now you're going to make Rabbi Shimon being the one who's strict. Velo Shaykh la Osve, Hoel Vyesha Mibo. Now you can't ask the questions that we asked above in terms of the phrasing of Rabbi Shimon because Rabbi Shimon does fit if he's being strict. And the Gemara continues, Amar Marzutra Mishmeid Rappapa Marzutra, the name of Rappapa says, Hilchisa the Halacha is... So it doesn't make a difference. Let's say you have a situation where one of them dies while he's alive, meaning the first wife dies, let's say, while the husband is alive, and then the second wife only dies after the first husband dies. So again, the question was, is there Ksubas bin Indichon in that case? Or are we worried that since the second set of sons aren't going to get that, it's going to cause fighting? So, so Marzutra says, in the name of Rapapa, Yeshlen Ksubas bin Indichon. The halach is indeed, there is Ksubas bin Indichon in that case. And furthermore, the halach is, Ksubas is most of the when we pay the ksuba to the children of the second wife, again, that's a that's considered like a debt to a creditor because the husband died before the second wife. So when we pay that, that payment of the ksuba is considered like Moser. It's considered like there is surplus that's being distributed. And then we would say there's ksuba has been indifferent for the children of the first wife. And the Gemara says, "Bishlomo iashmin an achas bechayi veachas b'moso yech len ksubas ben indichon." I understand. Let's say he would have taught us the halacha that when one dies in his lifetime and one dies after his death, that there's the halacha of ksubas ben indichon. The low ashmin an ksuba nasis moso lechaveret. And let's say he wouldn't have taught the second halacha that paying the, the ksuba off to the children of the second wife is considered a surplus. So hava amina. So then he, I would have thought, "Iika moser dinner in ilolos." I would have thought if he didn't teach that second teaching, I would have thought you need a moser dinner. 
dinner. And if you don't have the Moser dinner, I wouldn't have known this halacha, that the Ksuba can be considered a Moser, can be considered a surplus. But the Gemara says, Ella, but why didn't he teach it in a shortened, in a more abbreviated fashion? Ella, Lishma'inon Ksuba Nasus Moser Chaverta. What Rapapa should have said was he should have just taught that the second Ksuba is considered a surplus and allows you to have Ksuba as and then I would know there's obviously Ksubas bin in Dichrin. But no Yadana Mishum da Achas Bachaya Vachas Bemoso, Yeshlan Ksubas bin in Dichrin. I would understand that the reasoning over here is because in a situation of one who dies while he's alive and one who dies after he dies, there's Ksubas bin in Dichrin, because if you say the second Allah, it implies the first. And so the Gemara answers, Iashmin and Hachi, if that's what Rev Papa would have taught, meaning to say if he only would have taught that Ksuba Nas is Moser the Chaverta, I would not have necessarily known that there's Ksubas bin in Dichon in a situation of Achas Bechayo Achas Bemoso, because Hachi Avamina, this is what I would have thought. The case might be as follows. Kigon Shanosa Shalosh Noshim. Let's say you have an individual who marries not two wives, but he marries three wives. Vameisu Shtayim Bechayo Achas Bemoso. Then what happens is two of them actually died during his lifetime, so two of them are entitled to the Ksubas bin Indichrin, and one of them dies after he dies. However, but the one that died after he died, so that one actually only had girls. There were no boys over there, so they weren't inheriting anything. They weren't part of the inheritance. The Nekeva, the girl, is not a Bas Yerusha. She's not able to inherit. And so therefore, in such a situation, you wouldn't have any fighting between the, between the various sons of the various wives, because over here both of them are getting ksubas ben indichon, meaning both sets of sons from the two wives that died during his lifetime, they're both going to be getting ksubas ben indichon, and there's no argument with the sons of the other wife, because there there are no sons of the other wife. There's only a daughter of the other wife, so there would be no issue. So there you would have a situation where you can say ksuba nasis moser lechaverta, paying off the ksuba that is going to, cre- that is going to be cre- considered a surplus, and that will allow you to imp- implement the halacha of Ksubas bin Indichrin, and it doesn't necessarily prove that there's Ksubas bin Indichrin in the classic case of Achas Bechayev and Achas Bemoso, because in that case where there would be fighting, maybe there wouldn't be. And that's what the Gemara says, Aval Achas Bechayev, Achas Bemoso. But if you have a situation of Achas Bechayev and Achas Bemoso, and the, and the one that died after he died had a male, so then there already could be a fight, then maybe we should be concerned that there's going to be a fight, and maybe then we wouldn't say there's Ksubas bin Indichon, and that's why Kamash Malan, that's why he wants to teach both halachas. He wants to make it clear that number one, Ksuba is considered to be, the payment of Ksuba is considered to be a surplus, and number two, in the case of Achas Bechayev and Achas Bemoso, there is a halach of Ksubas bin Indichon. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah. Mishaya Nasui Shte Nashim. Let's say you have a situation of a person who is married to two wives, Vamesu, and then they die, Viachakach Mesu, and then he dies, so they die first, and then he dies. This again, this is the case of Ksubas bin Indichon, where even though it's a situation where they're really not paid the Ksuba, and so it should be on a Doraisa level, certainly should just be a regular case of inheritance among all the various sons. But again, we say no, that each set of sons, they're going to get the Ksuba of their mother. That's Ksubas bin Indichrin, the Yisomim Evakshin Ksubas Iman. So now if the case is that the Yisomim, they all want to collect the Ksuba that was promised to their mother, they want the Ksubas bin Indichrin. The Ainsham Elish take Ksubas, but you don't have any surplus. Like we said, the Halach of Ksubas bin Indichrin only applies by surplus, but there's only enough to cover the Ksubas. So in such a situation, Cholk and Beshava, in such a situation, they have to divide everything evenly like a normal Yerusha. There's no Halach of Ksubas bin Indichrin. But the Mishnah says, Hayasham Moser Dinar. Again, like we said before, if there is a surplus of a dinar, there is something to divide even after everyone takes their ksuba. So then, Elu Notlim Ksubas Iman, the Elu Notlim Ksubas Iman. These ones take the ksuba of their mother, and the other set of sons, they take the ksuba of their mother. Now let's say the, the, they say, the, uh, they say we're orphans and we're going to take our property. You know what? We're willing to throw in that extra dinar into the property of our father and that will be the surplus and that will enable us to collect the ksubas ben indichon. That's what the ones who, who stand to inherit the larger ksuba want to do. They would rather there be a surplus so they can collect the large ksuba. So let's say they say we'll throw in a little extra in order to create the surplus so that we can collect. Ain Shoman Lahan. We do not listen to them. Everything has to be evaluated what it's worth in Bezin. If they say 
we're going to we're going to throw in a little bit we'll evaluate our portion a little less than it's really worth in order that there be a surplus we do not listen to them and the Mishnah continues hayusham nechasim beroi einan kevamuchzak let's say the property that the father left over so you have some potential property that's coming into the inheritance later on does that consider is that considered to be a surplus and the Mishnah says no that is not considered to be muchzak that is not considered to be like property that they really have so it doesn't count for the surplus Rashi over here explains hayusham nechasim beroi sheru uyulipo lehem yerusha me avi avi let's say they have a grandfather who's still alive he hasn't died yet property is going to come to them through that achar mosavim he'll die let's say the grandfather dies after the father well the cheshetibol yesha mosadina b'shtei yerusha so once the grandfather dies and that comes down there will be a surplus but the Mishnah said einan kivim mochzak einan achshav and achshav lios kilo ein mochzak and ben kvar v'yesh kan mosadina that's not all that's not considered to be mochzak and therefore that's not considered to be that there is a surplus Rabbi Shimon Omer Rabbi Shimon says afilu yesham nechasim she'ein la machrayis even if you have property let's say movable property einam klum that's nothing einon klum at sheyusham nechasim she'esh la machrayis yosra al shtei aksubas dinar it has to be that you have actual land that is going to be more than the the two ksubas by a dinar only that is going to count as a surplus. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabbon and the rabbis taught, Lazu Elev, Lazu Chamesh Meos. Let's say you have a situation, one Ksuba promises a thousand, to the other wife there was promised five hundred. Im Yesham Moser Dinar. So again, if there is a surplus of a dinar, Elunolin Ksubas Iman, Velunolin Ksubas Iman, each one can take, each set of sons can take the Ksuba of their mother, this one takes the Ksuba of their mother, these ones take the Ksuba of their mother, Vimlav Yechelko Beshove, and if not, then they have to divide it evenly. And the Gemara says, Pshita is obvious. Merubin vinismatu, kvar zachu behen yarshin. Let's say there was a lot of property. Then after the death of the father, the property actually lost value, so there was no surplus. But at the time of the death, there was a surplus in that situation. And so therefore, there should be ksubas ben indichrin. So there we say the yarshim already have merited. There is going to be ksubas ben indichrin in that, in that case. So those who have, let's say, the larger ksuba, they will get it. Muat and Minisrabu Mai. What if it's the reverse? What if there was too little property, there was no surplus, but after the death of the father, it actually increased in value. Suddenly there became a surplus. Do they now get Ksubas bin Indichrin? And the Gemara continues, Tashma, come in here the following proof. The Nichse Devei Bartzirzur, because there was a property of the house of Bartzirzur, Muat and Minisrabu have. It was exactly this case. It started off, it was very little property, there was no surplus, but then it increased in value after the death, and there, suddenly there was a surplus. The Asulakami der Avamram, and they came before Avamram, and the people who had the larger Ksuba, those sons, they wanted Ksubas bin Indichrin. They wanted that large amount. Amar Luhu, so he said to them, this means to say that he said to the ones who had the smaller Ksuba, Zil Pai Sinu, he said, you have to go appease them. Go appease the, the people who are inheriting the larger Ksuba because they're really entitled to it. Lo Ashkechu, they didn't pay any attention to him. They said, no, they're, they're, they're really not entitled to Ksubas bin Indichrin because at the time of the death, there was no surplus. Amar Luhu, he said to them, Ilom if I see Sulu, if you're not going to go try to appease them, if you're not going to listen to them, Machin al Chubi Silo Dolomaba Doma. Rashi over here says, I'm going to hit you, Silo Dolomaba Dama coats. I'm going to take a thorn against you. Sheino Motzi Dama. I'll hit you with a thorn that doesn't cause any blood to be drawn. Binokvo Babasar. It's just an expression. It means to say, Kilomar Shamta Venido. He means to say, I'm going to hit you with this thorn that doesn't draw blood, meaning I'm going to put you into Cherem. So Shadrino Lakami de Rav Nachman. So then, Rav Amram, he sent them in front of Rav Nachman to get a psak. Amar Laheni said to them, Kashem Shemerubin Vinismatu, just like in a situation where there was a lot of property and it got smaller, but then we say that is considered to be a surplus and will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daftzadi Aleph Amud Beis.